Hey guys, and welcome to the second installment of the Advanced Additive Scenes Angry Bots demo. Uh, I'm just going to go over some of the more complex situations that can occur when you're splitting up an existing scene uh, using the Advanced Additive Scenes plugin. Uh, so what we're going to see now is uh, when I split some of these scenes up and uh, create um, additive scenes from them, there's going to be some cross-scene references. Now, full disclosure, I haven't done this uh, for a while now, so I don't remember the exact steps to doing this, and instead of doing it first and then going through them, I thought we'd uh, sort of work through them together, and that way you can sort of see the uh, the issues that I run into, um, what the errors mean, and then see me kind of think through the process of how to fix it. So um, I do remember that these two ones gave me problems, so I left them alone for the first part of the demo, and now I'm actually going to use the advanced additive scenes to make them into additive scenes. Um, so I can do that just by doing uh, game object create other coding jar subscene, and then I get my little subscene object here. Uh, this one, what was it called again? Dynamic. All right, so let's create a subscene and. Um, under here, dynamic, and right away it's telling me I have some crossing references because it tries to save it right away. Uh, so I can choose break references, which will make sure that none of those references get serialized out, or I can hit cancel, which will give me a chance to sort of fix it up. And I'm going to hit cancel so that I don't lose any of those references. And now I can look at my console window and sort of see where those references are coming from. So um, these are the errors that I'm looking for. And it's telling me I have a crossing reference from main scene. Uh, so when I say main scene, that just means that it doesn't live in a uh, additive scene. So when I say main scene, and then I have an object mood boxes, and I can see that right here. That's the one right there. Uh, I have splash managers array data. So if I look around, do do do. Sorry, uh, I think that's over here. Splash managers array. So I can tell right away that um, it doesn't look like I have one here. So it might be a private variable. Uh, I'm not seeing it yet, but I'm not giving up yet. I'm just going to load up this code here and see if I can find, and I can see it right here, Splash Managers, and it's hide an inspector. That's why I couldn't see it. Um, so this is, and the Rain Managers, so both those things, Rain Managers and Splash Managers, uh, have references to raindrops and rain splashes big and small. Um, so what I'm going to guess is that um, in this new subscene here, I'm going to rename it right away. In fact, dynamic. I'm going to have objects in here called rain splashes big and small. Uh, and that mood boxes is referencing that data. Now, I think. I can probably just move this mood boxes into that subscene. Now, when I do that, um, I mean, it's changing the, the way the level is around, but that makes sense. If that data is supposed to live uh, touching data in that uh, sub level or additive scene, then it should probably live with that additive scene. So I'm just going to move it into there. Now, if, if I hit save, no, I still have some, and it's telling me that the uh, I have more data in there. Playable mood boxes is referencing main entrance airlock one. Oh, sorry, this is misc text adventure. Text adventure. It's telling me it's referencing some data in the player mood boxes. Okay, fair enough. So that's probably not the, the best thing that I should have done. Maybe I'll move that mood boxes back out here because I'm going to run into a bunch of uh, dependencies. And instead I'm going to look at this code here. And already 
I should have just looked down like two steps later where I can see that this code, since it's private, it's never been referenced, uh, like hard linked in the editor. It's actually trying to instead um, get that, uh, sorry, get that object at runtime. So I'm gonna do a quick search through all here. See splash managers, see if it's been used anywhere in the project. It doesn't look like it. I'll see the same thing with rain managers. Is that being used anywhere? No. So these things should actually not be public. They should probably be private. Uh, and let's see what happens if I compile my code. Well, I must have just missed one of the references to it. So instead of making them private, I will just make sure that they don't get serialized out. And I can do that probably by doing uh, non system dot non serialized. Is it that? Sorry, I'm very, very rusty with uh, JavaScript. I do not have... Um, okay. Let's try that again. Hey, it works. So I've saved that off now. I have no... Uh, no errors when I save that um, additive scene. So now I'm going to do the same thing with static. Let's do this again. Create other coding jar subscene. Uh, this is the new subscene. I'm going to call this static and I will create Scenes, subscenes, static. I do not want to break those references. I want to fix them up. So I have reflective objects array from the main camera. So again, that's the main scene. So I can look here, main camera. This is this, uh, reflective objects array. So here's my reflective objects array here. So this was easier to find. It wasn't wasn't hidden on me. Um, so instead, I can click on these guys and see exactly what their uh, exactly what they're um, referencing here. So I mean, there's a couple strategies now that I'm thinking of taking. Uh, one of them is that I could use the ugly thing that uh, we just looked at, where I could probably use code that finds these objects by name, but that's not really a good way of working and I never really condone that. Um, so instead, what I'm thinking of doing is taking a closer look at these objects. So uh, these are, or if I frame it, what is this exactly? Oh, it's part of the level. Okay, so um, you can see that this whole object looks like it's part of the level. So anything I grab here is just part of one big level geometry. Um, so we have control of this prefab, or you would in a in a normal project, you would. And, uh, since this isn't really the project that uh, you know we own, it's just a demo that came with Unity. I don't really have um, this the source of this file. But if I did, uh, what I would do is I would remodel it so that um, I don't need that these pieces that uh, need to be uh, referenced across scenes. I wouldn't have them all in part of the um, part of the static subscene. So, I mean, that's easy enough to do. And I'm going to sort of just mimic that right now. So, I'm going to go over to this piece here. And 
I know that this piece should not uh, be part of this model. So I would remodel it in the uh, modeling application, or actually, I'm not an artist, so I'd ask my artist to remodel it, but I'm going to just simulate that uh, here. So instead, I'm going to uh, clear parent. It's going to tell me I lose my prefab connection. Uh, again, in a real project, you wouldn't lose your prefab connection. You would just remodel that. So now this lives outside of that subscene. I'm going to do it with the other two pieces as well. This guy here, game object, clear parent, and then for the last guy as well. Game object, clear parent. Okay, so now these three uh, live outside here. And of course, we haven't destroyed anything. They still live there. They're just going to live uh, in the main scene here with uh, the data that wants to reference them. So now if I go back here and I were to save this subscene, it's going to take a while, but I no longer get any cross scene references. So now I've successfully split um, this one big scene into multiple uh, sub scenes with uh, additive levels. So I guess the one th uh, the the strategies I've showed you is that you can first of all make sure that your code isn't unnecessarily referencing uh, things across um, additive scenes. So in that case, uh, in our first case, it was, I believe, the uh, semi-static object that was referencing something or the dynamic object. Yes, it was the dynamic object. So the mood boxes was referencing uh, things in the dynamic um, subscene. And we just fix that by making sure that we add the non-serialized um, attribute which means that Unity doesn't save the reference to it in the editor. And instead, we're uh, using what the original code was doing and finding it at runtime. The second one was simply making sure that uh, things that reference each other live together. So the main camera was referencing a bunch of geometry. That geometry should live with the main camera in the main scene. The last thing that I kind of want to show you guys, because I, I probably should have showed it in the other demo, and I, I kind of regret that I didn't, but I don't want to re-record it, so I'm just going to show it here, is that these subscenes that I've uh, created, these are just uh, regular Unity scenes. Um, so I'm just going to, first of all, close out this scene. And you can see here that this is all the dynamic data. Uh, that was living in the scene. Let's not save that. Let's go straight to enemies. This is all the enemy placement in the scene. Let's look at all the static geometry. So that's basically what the level looks like. That's all the stuff that doesn't move. Uh, this is all the static uh, information that lives in that scene. This is really cool. And here we should be able to see that we're missing a floor somewhere. Yes, this floor here, that's the one that I moved into the main scene. So it no longer lives in this file. And just to recap, when we put them all together, all those different pieces, we load up this, uh, this main scene that we've been working on. Uh, it's just taking a while to load while it loads it all in. And this is the final result. So that's all those scenes merged together make this scene. There's my little guy, there's my little piece of geometry that I moved. And there's the rest of the geometry. Um, all right, guys. Well, uh, thanks for watching. And I hope you found this tutorial uh, informative. And I hope you uh, buy the plugin because it's really useful. And you should do it if you have multiple people on your team. All right. Cheers. Thanks, guys.